Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So welcome to the August 2022 forum held on the 30th of August 2022, starting time 7.02. This forum is South for Matters um, monthly ward forum we have. Um, these forums are a place for residents of South Hall and beyond to discuss their issues. Um, so that's any issues, whether it comes to council, public, land, um, traffic, whatever your issues are in the area over the last month or over the last few months, you can raise here. And we'll do our best as we can to sort of action them accordingly, whether that's send it to the council or maybe we can help out somebody on this call, maybe have the knowledge. That's what these forums are for. My name is Sufyan. I am um, the host for tonight's meeting um, and currently acting chair, unless the, the chairperson attends. Um, I've got my colleague Angela, Angela from Cleaning for South and Hayes. And we've got other colleagues from Cleaning for South and Hayes, Ealing Independent Network, and so on and so forth. But this meeting is not political, I would like to say. It's not a political forum. It is a sole public forum where anyone can speak at any about anything within reason, obviously. So we'll get started now. Um, so to start off with, um, I will, um, just give me one second. Um, and you're my host. Do you want me to switch you back to hosting? Yeah, just switch it, sorry. Okay, I've switched in our host. Okay, um, so yeah, just want to touch on uh, the first issue of which has come to light, which is parking and uh, parking illegally, um, which is a big topic in South. Now, the issue I have with parking is not that there's, of course, there's not enough car parks in South. There are I wouldn't say there's more than three car parks and stuff that I can think of off the top of my head. Now, when it comes to parking, my issue is not that people are parking incorrectly, but more parking dangerously on double yellow lines, which are causing blind spots for people in bays which they shouldn't, i.e. people parking in disabled bays and they don't have a disabled badge, which actually it happens at... Um, near where I work in, um, in New South or where people are parked and disabled by left their car there all day, nobody said anything. And then when a disabled patient comes, they say, where do I park? I can't get my wheelchair out. Or well, I don't have space for my wheelchair. And there aren't parking attendants. The councillors might say, yeah, we've put X amount of funding in there, but we want to see these attendants because I see them in maybe Broadway here and there, but even then I ask them, how many PCNs have you issued? We don't know. We've got no record. I said, don't you get paid to sort of count how many PCNs you've got or you've done or where? Because I can tell you round the top of my road, no PCNs are issued, double yellow line, parking illegally with a massive four by four. And he's got other cars to park there. anyway. That's just an issue on parking. Um, just want to touch on um, something which we touched on a few months ago, which is, um, um, I think we touched on, it's about safety in the area. Now, on the Broadway, or on South Road rather, there are a lot of narrow side streets, narrow side streets. Now, Cambridge Road comes to mind when I say this. I was at the KFC um, a couple of days ago and the guy came in with all blood on his hands. And I just, um, I just come back from Ealing hospitals on the way back home. Guy comes in with all blood on his hands and he's panicking, he's shouting his head up. So of course I go to him, is everything okay? Are you, are you bleeding? And he said, I've, st I've stabbed someone. And I said, excuse me? So I, at first I thought he said he's been stabbed. So I go lift up your top because where the blood was was on his uh, sort of lower left side of his chest. So I go, can you lift up your shirt? So he lifted it and there was no sort of 
stab wound or anything. So I thought that's fine. Then he goes, I've stabbed someone. And he showed me, he showed his hands were full of blood. And I go to him, just take a seat. Um, he goes, don't ring the police, don't ring the police. I'll just say, take a seat and calm down. He then goes up to the counter at KFC and starts to shout and be aggressive towards the staff. Poor young lady must have been no, no older than 25, 26. And she got so scared, she ran into the back. What she had done is she had rang the police. I kid you not, about eight police cars <laughs> pulled up within about a minute for a change and stuff, which I was very impressed by. And all these officers came with armed, they were armed, they had tasers on them. And I thought, what the hell? And then they, they go, where is the guy who stabbed someone? And I go, well, I mean, I was just there. And then the lady from KFC started to shout. She was like, there he is, there he is. He was sitting down. He was very cooperative with the police. And then it turns out this guy was actually on an injunction. He had an injunction. He wasn't allowed to be in Southland. He was shouting set up so we could hear everything. He goes, oh, well, I was only in the area for work and I've done something stupid. We all do things stupid. Obviously, they arrested him on the spot. Um, but just to show you that stabbing still happened in the area we live in. And it's a very scary thing. I mean, I'm a 21 year old. I mean, this weekend was a massive street festival, not even carnival. There's been about, I think I've, I've heard of three stabbings which have already happened over the weekend at that carnival. Not to say that we shouldn't celebrate culture or different cultures, but there needs to be some level of policing which is decent and, and it is manned to a certain level. And there needs to be a certain level of, um, of care when it comes to the police. Because people often, there's such a negative image of the police right now, because of obviously all of, this, all of these movements which have come about over the last couple of years. There's been such a negative image of the police. And I don't blame it. Me, myself, I'll tell you straight, I don't have a good, a, a, a good sort of, image of the police anymore because of how I've been dealt with at a personal level where I've been stopped numerous times never committed a crime in my life don't have I'm not on the police database never given I've been stopped I've been questioned I'm like I don't have to tell you anything about myself legally I don't have to they go well you do have to I'm like no I know my stop and search rights because I've a couple of weeks ago I was pulled at Iron Bridge was walking back from the McDonald's. The only crime I committed was getting a burger while I was meant to be going to the gym. That's the only crime I committed. Police pulled me, he tried to search me. I was like, you can't search me. You legally need to provide me with a stop and search warrant. And they shit themselves. Like, mind my language, but that's what they did. These officers don't know what they're doing. And they think, because we're young, we're young, we don't know our rights. And I do know my rights. So that just shows you. Anyway, that's enough of me. Sage, I believe you've got your hand up. Just let me ask you to unmute. Oh, yes. Thank you, Sufian, for letting me in. Um, you mentioned stabbings, okay, that story about KFC. Then your mind drifted over to highlight, you know, over the weekend, you said the Nottingham Carnival. And instinctively, you mentioned st stabbings. Do you associate Nottingham Carnival with crime and stabbings? No, no, no. There were stabbings there. That's why that came to mind. Okay. Because so at the festival, do you, yeah. Do you know? Many, yeah. If it's not a festival, but um, anyway, that's a minor point. Uh, do you know how many people attended on the Sunday and the Monday? Yeah, about three million or something. Three million. So, uh, what's the population of London? You're testing me there. I'm not good with my. About, about 10 million, UK yeah. population 70 million. So when you take a group of diverse group of people, 3 million, I'll choose your figure, it's not that's incorrect, but 3 million. Do you not think that there will be stabbings, robbings of, of in any given situation? You take a block chunk of the UK, you know, like move it around, and there will be stabbings going on, murders, rapes, you name it. Yeah, of when course. A concentration of people in such a, you know, such a large amount of people in a small area, there will be stabbings. Now, one thing you got to remember, yeah, Sufian, and you should know better, is 
Notting Hill Carnival is one of the most beautiful things ever. Yeah, it's not it's not a black thing. Yeah, it's it celebrates all cultures. I know. Oh, I didn't say. I didn't say. No, 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 no. I said I'm just highlighting a single point with most people. There's an important point where I'm going to get to if you let me speak. Yeah. Okay. The point is, it's very diverse. You'll see people from all over the world coming there. You've got black, white people, Chinese, Asians, a lot, lot of mixture of people going in there. Okay. Now, it's the the reason I picked up. You know what you have said was yesterday. I'm in the evening. I'm reading the Daily Mail, and every single time I read the carnival, or you hear a report of the Notting Hill Carnival, whether it's on the mainstream news, ITV News, BBC Sky, they always mention stabbings. Yeah. Now, did you know what happened at the Reading Festival, which is a predominantly affluent and uh, you know and attended by affluent white people? What happened there? Do you know? No. On, on Saturday, armed um, police had to come in. They, they they had to get all those people, the campers and everything, to get out because certain individuals walked in there and started burning the tents and all that. Was that ever sort of highlighted? What I'm saying is, no, it is what it's the biggest gathering of people for that kind of thing in the whole of Europe. Yeah. Of course, you're going to, by the nature, the fact that there are so many people that you are going to get a lot of crime and things like that. But that's expected. As I said, you at that same spot, you know, same time, you took, take three million people, say, around Birmingham, there would have been probably more stabbings. Of course. More crime committed, yeah. So what, what I'm saying, the media portrays Notting Hill kind of every single time. They'll, they'll have pictures of the dancing, a few... Please, yeah, in joining in, you know, looking stupid because they can't dance. Got a hand. They do. They are chilled out over there, but they always say stabbing. So why do they say Reading Festival stabbings? Uh, the Virgin, this Vilas. You know, there's loads of other festivals happening. They yeah, so yeah, I don't, I don't doubt any of that. No, but what, it's it's interesting because instantly, see, one important thing about human psychology is the fact that. When you say something, you you can figure someone out. If you don't say something, you'll tell you that that says a lot about it. You st started talking about stabbings, and all all of a sudden you mentioned Notting Hill Carnival, because there's an association in your mind. No, so again. Two. So why, why did you true. mention Notting Hill Carnival for then? Because that was over the weekend, and I heard of instances through work, through the news, which happened. So I was just mentioning the police. And the stabbings, and I mentioned the stabbing which happened. I mentioned in the South stabbings Wolf. before the police. Yeah, which as soon happened. As you in said South Wolf. Wolf. We could play this recording again, and you'll see. As soon as you said over the weekend, Notting Hill Carnival Festival stabbings, it's the association. That's what the media want you to think. No, so again, yeah, I, I would have only mentioned your... Notting Hill because I was talking about not only because I know what now, I've been to Notting Hill Carnival. I didn't go this year. I went, I've been to Notting Hill Carnival. I go with, with my mates. I know what Notting Hill Carnival is about, but the thing is, I only mentioned the stabbings because they did happen over the weekend. Of course, there's stabbings all across London which don't go reported. That's the way the media is in every country. It's not just here. I know that. I know no, that. Yeah. Can we, get, can we, can we get back to Southall issues? Because, yeah. you know, I mean, I OK, we all know up, that the Nottingham Carnival, they have their the issues. But I agree, I agree okay, with Safia. Can you have the let me finish what yeah. I'm saying? I don't interrupt people. OK, first of all, it's very important, being activists, that we don't have prejudices as such, yeah? OK, first, there was a mention of Notting Hill stabbings together. Now, there's no point trying to worm out of it. That's the fact that us being activists, you know, being the voice of Saffal as such, we should think beyond that. That's my point. I'll listen now. You guys carry on. Jan? Guys, even I yeah, can agree I mean, with I this agree. Can we, can we, Can we bring Jan in? Yeah, yeah I agree with Sophia. I mean, Jan the last... going to be a good uh, topic, but we have to still keep it one topic as well, as everyone else is saying the same thing. Just keep it to Southall. Forget Notting Hill Carnival a moment. Forget everything else. Keep it to the point of what we are trying to raise awareness and make sure that we are raising it correctly. Thank you. Jan, can you, because yeah, you've got I mean, a valid point to make. Yeah. 
I agree with Sufyan. I mean, you know, as you all know, I've lived in Southall all my life. And every time I, I, I have notifications that come through from the local news agencies and everything like this. And there does, maybe I'm imagining it, but it does seem to be a growing in, increase in stabbings, in things that are happening in Greenford, in Southall Broadway. There was one in, was it Sussex Road the other day? Merrick Road, Western Road. Um, you know, it, I don't know what's going on in this area at the moment, but from my personal view, it, it's, it's getting worse. It's getting frightening living around here. Jan, I agree with you. On Friday, I was taking my kids to Westfield. We're walking down Dirty Road and suddenly two police BMW 4x4s um, turned up and they was clearly looking for somebody. I overheard one of them say something about Emerald Square. Next minute, they turn round um, and race off down Durley Road. And uh, we walked to the bus stop, got the bus from Western Road. Um, and uh, it took time to get to uh, the junction with Montague mm -hmm. Way. We were overtaken, I think, by at least uh, two police cars. Um, and one blocked off Montague Way. Mm. And later on, my daughter belongs to a WhatsApp group. She said someone's been stabbed. And then I think later in the evening, there was an article that was shared on social media about, you know, the stabbing and, you know, a police manhunt looking um, for the offender. Um, and it was just shocking, really, to see the police in, you know, these vehicles actually you know, on the lookout for the suspect. And me and my kids were just minding our own business. And um, it certainly brought it home to me, um, you know, to know that somebody has been stabbed and this has got nothing to do with Notting Hill Carnival. And I think the scary thing is so many people carry weapons and they don't think twice about it. And, uh, you know, they don't fear you know, the consequences. A lot of them argue, I'm carrying a knife for defense purposes, but I think if you carry a knife, you're prepared to use it yeah. and potentially take somebody else's life. And I think, you know, there is an important um, point about policing. I basically don't see the police patrolling. Um, I've got to be honest with you. You know, I only saw them responding to an emergency incident. Um, but, you know, years ago when I was growing up, I didn't grow up in London, we had a community Bobby and he was known, you know, throughout the local area. I still remember his name. He was called PC Paul. And, um, you know, us kids knew to stay on the right side, you know, of him. And, you know, he was an integral part of the community and, and very well known. Um, my neighbour last year, she was broken into. The police didn't bother turning up. She just got a crime reference number. Say my car was broken into a few years ago. I just got a crime reference number. Um, so there's a real absence of um, policing um, and being integrated into the community. And I think there's a lot of distrust of the police now, particularly what happened with Sarah Everard. You know, I was brought up to think, well, you know, a police officer was a respectable person. You know, it never crossed my mind um that uh, you know they could be criminal um so i think there's a big sort of gulf between the community and the police which is not going to get better and um at the moment um and for some reason the police seems to attract bully boy types um so i remember actually uh when i was about 18 somebody i went to school with joined the police um, and she wasn't black, she was white, and um, she didn't stick it for long. And she says something about the locker room culture. I never went into detail, but I think probably it was quite a difficult male macho environment. Um, so, you know, that was over 30 years ago. So what's changed? Not an awful lot. Yeah, and that's, um, I mean, this is the thing with the Met. I mean, over the, over the weekend, um, I was on the 482 on the way back from Uxbridge and the five what, what only could look 
what, what only looked like to me what were Romanian gypsies, five of them came up to me asking for my phone. I'm like, all right, you want my phone? Come take it. Because I don't, because I've been, I've been held at knife point and I know what to do. So these five guys, I mean, they were all on CCTV on the bus. They asked me, they go, yeah, um, give us your phone. I go, no, what are you going to do? They looked about 14, 15. I go, you're probably 14. What are you going to do to me? I'll go, come. He goes, I've got a weapon on me. All right, you've got a weapon on you. You're on CCTV. And they immediately ran off the bus and went towards Minute, is it Minute Country Park. Uh, they went to a park nearby off Oxbridge Road. They ran to that direction. So I rang the police. The police go, we don't have any units available. We can give you a CAD number. They gave me a CAD number. They contacted me yesterday. And I go to some other guys are what look like gypsies. They aren't going to be in the area for long. So there's no point of me continuing with this phone call. And they go, well, sorry. I'll go, this ain't the first time. This ain't the first time. I know it won't be the last. So you can say you're sorry until the cows come home. But unless someone's getting stabbed, and even then, you won't come for, you won't come for about... 14 or 15 minutes because you don't have any units available and I quote but the police don't have units available the paramedics the ambulances don't have any units available so what are they doing they're dealing with emergency crimes I've seen I saw I remember being on Oxford Road I got off by the the, the fish and chip shop I, I think it's Hillenden Fish Bar or Hillenden Fish and Chips whatever it's called and I was waiting there, probably saw about four or five units and I tried flagging them down, but they drove straight past. So what are the police actually doing? That's what I want to know. That's what I said to the controller. And um, it's, it's just crazy how the level of care ain't there for us. And, and I said it, I said it, and I'll say it again. We are the taxpayers. We pay our taxes to get the services, the police, the NHS, the fire brigade, and all the rest of it, which comes with it. Yeah. But can we can we bring in RN? Do you, yeah, you've got your no, hand up? Yeah. That's, that's, Do you want yeah. to unmute yourself? How's it going, guys? <clears throat> yeah, not too bad. Right. So, if you remember right, we did a bit of a broadcast only a few days ago where there was a stabbing on. Um, Montague and well pretty much the old side of Southall now we found out afterwards we don't well we actually don't even know what that situation was mainly revolving in or how it actually got involved or how it actually escalated or anything like that now this is near the brilliant restaurant where it started from so near to that corner end um, there was two males apparently fighting one pulled out a knife stabbed him right in uh, the other uh, the victim in the arm uh, in the back of the arm and caused the the victim to bleed out blood was all over the road when i say all over there was a crime scene there there was covered in blood a pair of hoodrich gloves the victim ran all the way towards the mosque and collapsed at the mosque now the situation has been raised I don't know how many times in Southall. We've had a lot. When I say a lot, I can't even figure out a number at the moment with just even saying it of stabbings in Southall. We've had deaths, we've had stabbings, all because of either jewelry, telephones, bags, like the kid, the Sikh kid who had a fake uh, G&D bag or something like that. And he got stabbed and killed just up the road from myself, like literally around the corner. Now, it's gone to the point where we have told, I know I don't like Sylvia saying his name, but today was the day when it had to be brought up and because obviously the Southall smelt of it, but the biggest bullshitter of all Southall is obviously Sharma. So obviously when you see the smell, when you know the smell, you know Sharma's around. That's how I was today. Right. So that's where my thing was of telling him what the fuck is going on in this town. Our town has gone in from what it used to be as a multicultural, multi-ethnical, multi-everything of everyone could be power, can walk down the street with no stress, no issues, no delays, no nothing. To now we are frightened to walk out our own doorstep because of Catholic converter crime. 
We've got, we're frightened of going out of our doorstep because we can't even trust the next door neighbor because you don't know what their mentalities are like now for everything what's happened. We are now living in a shit show of a society that people have turned around on our Instagram page from what we were from the Southall name and shame to now Southall's finest. People are still turning around and saying to us, Southall is a shit show or Southall is a shithole. It has changed dramatically to what it is, to what it used to be. And it's horrible. It's horrible. I don't like living in Southall myself that much anymore. It is gone to the point that just it, it's you you don't feel comfortable in that environment anymore. We went out to Southall myself just recently. Uh, we went to the doctor surgery, Sunrise Doctors, thinking everything is okay. Like, for example, do you know the British Heart Foundation? Right opposite it, you've got the guys doing the, ca uh, the, ca uh, the sugar cane and the coconut. All they're doing is breaking the coconut, leaving on the floor, discarding all the crap on the floor. Now, the council are seeing this every single day. Instead, the enforcement agents are more focused on guys spitting on the road, throwing chewing gum, or putting cigarettes on the floor. Or, or now this is where the bus thing is, is when they get busted and getting caught when they're checking out girls on the road. Now, when we turn around and went up to them and said to them, what the hell are you doing? You can see that this shit's going on. Nothing gets done. Because they're only worried about, oh, it's only a shop. The shop ain't going to do nothing. No, do you know what happens? When they go to the shop, they get given drinks. They get given stuff. Oh, don't worry, boss. We'll sort it out here. Have, a, have, have one of the sugar cane drinks. Have one of the coconut drinks. Just to be let off. It's, it's not what it used to be, and it's gone horrible. Yeah, it is absolutely shocking. Um, Jan, you've got your hand up. Do you want to unmute yourself? Jan, are you there? Jan, are you yeah, still with sorry, us? I was waiting for Sophia to unmute me. Yeah, I, I have to agree totally with RN. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I watched the UB1, UB2 pages. And when you see what's going on, like, I, I mean, I'm out. I'm all for people enjoying themselves, but it just seems to be any excuse now. We're having these uh, groups of people coming to Southall to celebrate India Independence Day, Pakistan Independence Day. This weekend, we've had it again because a certain team won the cricket. I mean, we are becoming a joke in society, you know. I mean, I, I mean, I, I work out of this area and I go to work and people say to me, my God, why are you still living there? You know, we are um, becoming Jan, a laughing stock of London. Jan, you know? can I ask I mean, you one thing? Hmm. Obviously, with the celebrations of Southall, just obviously, I, I, I agree with what you're saying 100 percent, totally. Yeah it's gone into a bit of a shit show when it comes to the celebrations. But if you remember right, with every single celebration, there's always been some sort of goodness into it. That South will becomes vibrant. Now, don't get me wrong. I get where you're coming from when it comes to celebration. It ends up being a shit show of towards police coming over, gives us a bad name. South was turned into a bit of a dump. Um, obviously, his stuff are getting thrown up on the road and everything. Like that. But one thing you did mention, which... Sofin will definitely agree with me, and I think more likely Angel will definitely agree with me as well. You referenced UB1. Hmm. Now, UB1 has multiple times encouraged this behavior. Now, they have done that on yeah, multiple times. Yeah, but irrespective times. of that, I, I mean, I only, that's, that's the only place I've seen it, yeah, because I've worked with people that tell me to go on there, et cetera. But the one I'm trying to get to is, is the fact that there are residents that live around that area that lives are being made a misery till two, three, four o'clock in the morning. These are not people that live in this area. So why do we accept people coming from Slough, even wide, further afield? Why do we allow it to come to our town and do this? When, you know, I was talking to a lady who, who knows somebody who lives off um, the Broadway. And she said, you know, we don't get, to, we don't get no sleep till three, four o'clock in the morning. Who goes around clearing up all the, re all the mess the next day? People, you saw it on the video, you know, people, the buses get, get, get stopped, you know, I just don't understand why is it acceptable behaviour? Yeah, why but, do the police and the council accept that people can well, do this in this area? 
John, just a quick one on that. So I was there for the Pakistani Independence Day, not to celebrate, to film what was going on, to, to pinpoint the council to it. There was a group of lads. Now, the roads were blocked for both Pakistan and, independ uh, Pakistan and India Independence Day this year. So when they were blocked from um, the end of, when you come on the approach of the station, if you're coming down towards South Road, going on to Lady Margaret, they had locked off that road where Amigos is, the Beacons Hill Road. And then they locked off um, just further on by the, the turning where, is it the Nat West or the Nationwide is um, just after near the town hall? So Nationwide. Towards, yeah, Nationwide. So I asked, I asked the police officer, have the council given you a green light to close tonight, the roads? They go, yeah, the council. I go, right, um, can we, um, is it going to be in the public domain, the, the closure, what the reason is? They go, no, no, we don't have to provide any closure details on why we're closing the road. I go, you actually do? But they did, though, Sufian. They did. They yeah. advertised it three or four days before that yeah. the south of Broadway was going to be closed off for yeah, the Indian so that, yeah, so, yeah, so that's fair enough, Jan. But when I asked the police this, they told me this. And I said to the police, you actually do. And obviously I found out later on that night when I was reading, yeah, there was notice given. And the reasons are understandable. Now, the thing you mentioned, UB1, UB2. Now, myself and um, South or Finest both know they promote certain things on there, which I don't agree with. Angela's come to me many times about this, about speeding, about this, and, and they might not intentionally do it, but they do do it. Now, the whole point of pages, his, the page was set out to put Southall on the map. But now the way the page has gone has turned into something totally different. And the way it's, the direction it's heading is not set up for the community. Now we've got pages out here like South of Finest, which help the community, which help us at a at a level where we get Sophie, the help. In, yeah. The page is no longer called that anymore. If you look on what they class themselves at, they're not that anymore. It doesn't state anymore or putting South on the map. They keep on saying that we are making a movement. That's their new thing. It, they've oh, changed right. it from being south or, or south or being put on the map to now saying we are now making a movement. And then they said we are a meme page. There, there's no longer a meaning of. Oh, UB1, right. I mean, I've UB2. not been on the page in a while, so I mean, so that's a bit out of date on my part, and I do apologise. Um, but that's yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, mean, it's, yeah, I think because a lot on. of their content now is beyond UB one, UB two. So, for instance, they covered that car crash that happened at Park Royal, where a young woman lost her life. Yeah, so, we, didn't, we kept it up. We made sure details were put up, like anything. Yeah. But, you know, going back to the, the whole sort of celebration and, um, you know, I'm for people celebrating, but not at the expense of inconveniencing um, local residents. It's totally unacceptable that people who might need to go to work or doing shift work cannot get any sleep. And for them, it will be hell on earth trying to get to sleep and people outside creating merry hell, having a nice time with no regards to families within their homes, perhaps with small children, struggling to get baby sleep, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, I've seen photographs of the state of the streets afterwards and the amount of litter, uh, you know, the food debris, uh, the staining on the pavements, you know, it makes our area look like a slum. Um, yeah. In actual fact, you know, Peter Mason did a video promoting the Southall Reset Programme. And I thought, this doesn't look like the Southall I know. Didn't see any overflowing bins. I didn't see any uh, food debris on the ground. I didn't see any staining around the bins. I didn't see any fly tipping. You know, it was a work of fiction, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, because the way the councillors and the leader of the council have done it is very um, um, uh, misleading, I feel. Now, where he says, oh, um, Southall is a very vibrant town. 
we both we all know this on this school. It's a very vibrant town. We've got a lot of culture here, a lot of heritage, a lot of history in this town. But where where we call them out about the bins being a a crap show, basically, uh, full of whatever else is on that bin, God bloody knows. I don't even go near public bins, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I would rather walk home with my empty rubbish and put it in my it's, own it's, bin. It's absolutely shameful. It's and embarrassing. Where, where Peter Mason films is very convenient, I feel, because he'll make sure those buildings are washed 10 times before he films it, because he doesn't like this, um, this area where he just, and I quote, I nod my head, um, in a room full, I don't understand people or something like that, he said. Um, and he takes the mick out of us. He did it at the town hall. He did it. He did it. Um, at, he does it at countless, countless public meetings. And I don't understand even their Labour Party members or councillors who don't speak up about this because racism shouldn't stand in any shape, way or form in this town nor anywhere else in this country. Because there is no, there is no place for racism in there. There is no place. I don't have time for people who can single out a group of individuals or a community because of their skin color, the language they speak, or anything for that matter. Because at the end of the day, if I cut my hand and he cuts his, we both bleed out red blood. That's my argument. You're not some sort of god because you're a counselor. I'm sorry, you're not. Whether you say, whether you think you are or whether like, like you think you are, guess what? You're not, you're a human. Like but he, has, he has no regard for this community. Yeah, he doesn't. You know, I, walk, I walk around the area and- um, Stepping stone for him. It's oh, a absolutely. stepping stone for bigger things. That's all he is. He doesn't give a toss about this, this, this town. Do you yeah. ever see him walking down, you know, your local street? Never. Um, I saw Councillor Nanda a couple of weeks ago. And I said, oh, you know, are you going to come down to the Mooga, um, which is uh, the basketball court on Spencer Street? And she looked at me like I was talking a foreign language. And um, she was outside of a property which allegedly she owns and is a house of multiple occupancy. You know, they are interfering their own nest. So they would chuck their own granny under the bus as long as they are OK and yeah. looking after themselves, me, myself, and I. And I mean, I'm not going to name, um, I'm not going to name names here, but new councillors as well, they're in it for self-gain. There are certain... 100, 100%. These they don't have give just two got in. hoots about yeah. local people, just got in. our yeah. struggles, the fact that every day when I go out, I can photograph fly tipping. Um, you know, I've set up a Facebook page, Streets of Southall, uh, and no joke, there are hot spots, and every week I can guarantee you that there will be black bin liners, um, all sorts of rubbish, household rubbish that should really go in either the blue or black recycling bin. And the only thing I can suspect is that um, it's people who live in outhouses and has multiple occupancies. They don't have enough bins. So I would imagine under cover of darkness, they just put it out. There's hot spots. You know, there's Sussex Road, there's Caxton Road, um, Balfour Road, uh, Spencer Street. It's just, it's like an epidemic, you know? It's all over the place. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's going to continue that way until these illegal landlords, these rogue landlords, get the fines they need, get these outhouses shut. Because I can tell you, I've seen it I've, on Norwood Road. I've seen it. People come out of these, these huts, because I call them huts. They actually look like huts. Come out from their bed doors and um, they, will, um, they will just come dash a bin bag. And I stop someone, I go, that's not a bin. He goes, yeah, the council pick it up anyway. I go, that's not the point. I said, that's not the point. There are rats in this area and that just attracts them. Go find a bin and go put it there. He goes, there are no public bins. I go, yeah, so you need to apply for a councilman. He goes, I can't. I live in a shed. 
the council are not doing anything about the issue. You know, they'll do a PR video, um, you know, that claim, you know, they make the claim that they're doing something. Um, but I've never seen anything like it as I've experienced in Southall. I've lived in Hamwell, I've lived in Enfield, I've lived in um, South London, I've lived in East London, never experienced anything to the extent that I do on a daily basis in Southall. Yeah, I mean, um, I've got hundreds, I've got hundreds of videos of this, this top of the road spot just in particular. We had a new driver yesterday, um, on the, on the double yellow, um, parked illegally, and then when they came back to their car, I spoke to the driver. He goes, "Well, everybody else parks there." I go, "Well, if everything, if, if everyone else jumped off a cliff, would you?" And they go, "No." I go, "Right, so then don't do it. You probably." And I said to him, "I said to him, you probably read the highway code, um, like um, more." Mo the most recent out of anyone else has parked it and you know this is illegal he goes where where does it say so I showed him I go if you had a disabled badge you still couldn't park it because you're obstructing the view and he goes where can I park and I go apply go speak to the council go get a car park there's a car park just down there you pay 125 for an hour he goes, there's no parking there. I go, that's not our issue. You shouldn't park on a double yellow, yeah, creating yeah. a hazard for us to exit that road. Anyway, I think Sagir's had his hand up for a while, so let me just get him in. Sorry, Sagir, I know you've been waiting. There you are. I asked you to unmute. Sorry. Yeah, it's been quite a while, man. Uh, I've forgotten uh, what I initially raised it for. It's been so long. Um, first issue, I think, uh, why I raised it was the police. Now, Angela and Sufian, you know, you mentioned sort of uh, quite a few issues with them. Now, yes, police are not fit for purpose. As you're aware, the Met Police, uh, along with other, another four or five forces in the, in the UK, have been placed under special measures. And secondly, the standards, the training standards, what they used to have at Hendon, they used to have a regime where it was like a military camp. They used to wake up early, go for parade. But due to government costs, I suppose, to say it's not the training isn't thorough and sufficient enough as it was 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago in our days. Now you've got, there were certain standards that had to be met as well. I think males had to be six foot or higher, uh, females a certain, and they used to have certain qualifications. That now has gone totally out of the bucket. You've got young kids who got that uniform on. They don't know what they're talking about, honestly. And they're on a power trip. I know. They're on a power, power trip. They are so used to the fact that in our age, let's, or we're talking about Southwood. You've got a lot of people, our parents, when they came initially in the 50s and 60s, they had respect for law and authority. Back home in India, wherever, in, you know, Southeast Asia, a police or people in authority would get away with murder, whether it was, you know, justified or not. It was that kind of, it was, you know, you didn't mess around with authority whatsoever. Slowly up, the second generation had that as well. But what's happened is now these younger kids, they don't have, they don't have no respect in that sense. And... You've got a lot of people who are still, you know, Southall is an, an ever-changing so, society. A hundred years ago, you had a lot of Welsh people coming here to find work. You let Irish, then you had the Asian and the, you know, Afro-Caribbean people. And now you've got loads of others. You've got a lot of Goans who come in. And these people are still, you know, fresh from other countries. And they, they fear the police or authority. So these guys, you know, these young policemen or certain police in Southall, they go around and they're so used to Wherever they tell people, people do it. But if you know your rights, you know what, what their training should be like and what they should be doing, and you tell them that, they don't like it whatsoever. One of the best things is, I've heard a lot of people say this, but you're a public servant, we pay your taxes. But I pay taxes too, they say. Now, that's not a right thing for them. They are paying taxes, but they're paying on taxes. Or they're paying a tax on taxes of the bloody general public here. The other thing is, they'll say, 
if you argue about, oh, we're going, we're leaving, I said they're doing you a favour. So imagine I was a criminal, I just murdered someone, and I, I start arguing with them. Will they say, no, mate, I'm going, if you don't want to see it? It's the lack of training, and it's, a, it's, it's unfortunately, you know, it's been going on for such a while now that it's become part of the culture. Young policemen who are newly recruited are partly to blame, but not 100%. Majority of that decision is higher up in the hierarchy. If you look at the College of Policing, it states that management is top down. The sergeant or inspector is expected to behave in a certain way, so he has a knock on effect to the other people around him or her. That's not happening as well because what's happened, these inspectors started about 20 years ago because they've they haven't had, you know, been doing the job properly or been, you know, there were certain views. I've now gone up the ranks. And obviously, that is now affecting the younger recruits. And eventually, it's going to get a lot worse unless someone does something. Second issue was, uh, I think Jan mentioned the fact about a lot of people are coming into Southwood. Okay, for the residents, it's shit, yeah. I'll use that word because other people have used the worse language than this earlier on. But it's beautiful for the business people. Without visitors coming in from other towns, Asian visitors, to Southwell, the business would be, they'll, they'll go bankrupt. Because what it is, it's like a day out for Asian people. They live in predominantly other communities where they don't have the facilities that we should be appreciative of like the shops opening so late such a very diverse you know cultures you've got sri lankan shops you've got polish <laughs> shops now that that kind of restaurants so they make a day out of it. us lot probably going to central london or blackpool we'll go there early in the morning and leave in the evening we'll do some shopping we'll do a bit of sightseeing and we'll definitely you know go to a restaurant so the business people are the ones who are actually benefiting it at the expense of us residents because of the parking that see that they park here now, one of the things that could be easily solved is if you go over the Southwell Bridge, the Canal Bridge on the Broadway, where the Curries is and the Argus is, there's a massive car park there, even quality food. That is mostly empty most of the time. So why at night does an Ealing Council in conjunction with Ealington Council, because Ealington Council is responsible for that, allow people to park there? And so most of the people go to these restaurants, which are between Townsend Road and Hamburg Road. They can walk here five minutes, or you can lay special buses or something. It, it'll, it'll, it'll solve problems for us residents here. So the businesses are the ones who are responsible. Now, it brings me back to the third point, which was, you know, they come in oh, for Eid and things like that. I, I, I was there when the, all this Palava started, and that was when Pakistan won the World Cup in 92. It happened outside TKC. They used to televise it early in the morning because it was in Australia. It was fasting as well for the Muslims. So they used to say, come in four o'clock. You can, you know, close your fast. They will provide you with a mini um, you know, uh, breakfast. And then they had a massive uh, projector. And everyone used to watch it on that particular day of the finals, which finished about in the evening about five o'clock or so. Pakistan won, that was the first time, and people went mad, there was a drama, they went between uh, where Creams is in that particular area, and the police hadn't seen anything like that, no one else had, there was buses that had to be stopped, people were pressing the buttons on the side of the exit, you know, the emergency button going in, there was one poor white lady, <laughs> stuck on Hammer Road going towards Axbridge, she didn't know, she thought there was actually a riot going on, so police eventually arrived about 15, 20 minutes and they had, they had to sit, one of the officers had to get out of the car, put her on the passenger and drive through the crowd. So that's where it all started. The businesses loved that because that meant that more people came in. Then what, if you remember, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the police did start putting, eventually after a year or two, because this happened on Diwali as well, then Pakistan Independence Day, then India Independence Day. Yeah, okay, so three or four. Two of those were the main thing. A lot of people did turn up. And it's usually young guys coming out of town with flashy cars. And all they did was blast music. And they were, it was basically a boy and girl thing, checking out the guys, checking out the girls, the boys checking out whatever. Yeah. Now, then, if you remember about 20 years ago, they did put off cordons. They used to block it off from uh, Hayes Bypass. 
You couldn't come in unless you could prove that you're a resident, driving license, vice versa, Beacon Street Road. And then where Dane Road joins onto Lady Mount, there's a mini roundabout. That's that end as well. So our area, South or Broadway, South or West, from South Road all the way to the canal, was totally blocked. It was safe for the residents. But the business people didn't like it. Because they were making so much money. All of a sudden, after about three, four years, they stopped there and things started going in again. But then what happened? It wasn't just the young kids coming in anymore. You had a lot of Pakistani immigrants coming in the late, you know, in the, in the um, sort of early 20s. And they started bringing from far. It was a whole family day out. So they will need say all oh, Pakistan. They'll come out with the flag, you know, you've got little babies coming. And again, it was good for the businesses as well. So it's, it's come something, made Southall bad and good in one sense, because they highlighted it as a presence. But obviously for us residents, it's become bad. Now, any kind of problem, you've got to have a dialogue. We say, oh, nothing's done, nothing's done. But then again, we say that every single meeting. What are we actually doing? What steps are we taking to actually do something about it. How many of you guys went to the Southall Community Alliance meeting last Thursday where it was but they, they hold like this, like this particular meeting every Thursday, I believe, on the last day of the month, meetings where any member of the public can go. And this month it was especially about local policing. They had an inspector from Ealing come in. I was going to go, but unfortunately I had an unexpected turn of events, so I couldn't go. But did anyone go here? No. No. Oh, so whose fault is that? See, we have to make an effort to do things. Yeah, but I don't even know about it. Okay. Again, again, forget. But we don't. These these meetings held by certain groups. We we do attend, and when we attend, certain groups and certain individuals don't like us there. Yeah, and that is sadly true. Yeah, and we have seen it first hand. But yes, okay. we will attend if we are. If we, yeah, if it's no, a no, public uh, meeting. No, no, it's a public meeting, so it doesn't matter. With any kind of cause, yeah, you're going to have opposition. It's you need, you know, you, you need determination. You're going to keep on fighting. You can't just give up after taking one or two steps. A baby doesn't learn to walk after one or two steps. Oh, it's too hard. I keep falling. I ain't gonna. I'm going to give up. I'm going to lie there. Let mummy take me here to the in the push chair. No, it don't work like that. Yeah, you're going to get real. Yeah, there's ways of achieving things. There is nothing in this world that you can't achieve. All it means is unity, determination. Okay. Now, it raises another issue with Jan brought up. And she said, and uh, Sufian, you said this year, they put cordons off. Now, they did actually plan it. There was a map of it. It was it was put on South Hall, uh, Broadway and Lady Margaret. Twitter, uh, their Twitter feed, they had a map of where it's going to be done. It said here, you know, uh, over the, <coughs> where the... <coughs> Hayes Bridge is all where the Aussie Garvin roundabout, one block there. Another one on Beacon Street Road where Glassy Junction was South of College, South, where the old former post office was there. And another one, as I said, Carlisle Avenue, where Dane Road joins on to Lady Mark, which, you know, which was a good thing. I, I was happy with it. They didn't, police did, and the council didn't make residents aware of it four or five days. Where the, the message spread, it was spread on quite a few websites as well. So whether it is the right way, because that was done digitally, and whether the majority of people in South Hall are aware, you know, savvy digitally, that's a different question, yeah? Maybe they need to have put posters or highlight on Desi Radio, oh. things like that. See, that's what we're going to say. We can't just knock, knock everything, yeah? We could, you, you have to su suggest solutions. Because every single problem there is, there is a solution to it. If I, if I just now start cussing, you know, the police and all that, they are going to ban you from the meetings from next time because they don't like that. But if you're polite to them and say, look, we appreciate the fact that you did advertise it, but most residents weren't aware of it. Oh, why? Because most people in South Hall, you know, can't maybe understand English. It's a diverse community. Maybe yeah. they should have done it in different languages. And uh, on social media as well. You know, that's yeah, a big issue. You know, they yeah. did do it on social media, but, you know, there's ways of doing it. It's, it's yeah. not... You could, uh, no, no, they can't just rely upon social media. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody didn't know about it and they wanted to get back to their home. 
don't know if they did because they were asked for their passport. It was like no, no, no. This, to is, this is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to finish off immigration that point. Control. Yeah, yeah. So what is look mosques, gurdwaras, temples? You could make the committee there aware there. A lot of people go there on a daily basis, especially in daytime. The aunties and the uncles, and then they could take that information and decimate it to their family and vice versa. The word spreads. It's quite simple. It's, it's no rocket science. Now the other issue is that yes. They did put that up and they said on the website that or you know, on Twitter that residents had to prove the fact that they had to more residents to come in, which is either a drive, possibly a driving license. I made my neighbor aware of it. He, he works down the airport. Now. He came back and they actually had the block on uh, just the bridge here, you know, where where Metro Bank is. When then they said, no, mate, you ain't getting in. He showed them everything. He took extra ID because he was aware of it. He finished late, you know, about, he finished about 10. So he must have got here about four past 10, 10, 20. It's a short drive from the airport. They go, no, we can't use this. Ex you can't come in. We believe you're a resident. But we've been told not to let anyone in this way. You have to go around. So he went back down Hayes Bypass, went all the way around to Greenford down Lady Margaret. And when he got to the other block, just where, you know, where I'm talking about, where Dane Road meets on to Lady Mark, the little roundabout. No, no, you can't get in the air either, mate. So you had to go Beaconsfield Road. That act, and that was chocolate block because everyone at those, there was, as I said, three, you know, entrances were being told to go to one spot on Beaconsfield Road. Well, that's just that, totally ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the so, man's just finished a night shift. He's tired. He wants to go home and go to bed. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the police have really mucked up on. The, you know, why can't they allow people who come from Oxford sites to go straight? It, it, it doesn't take blood. It was empty. You know what? It was beautiful. I loved it. You know why? First time I live on Woodlands Road, yeah? And I'll get all the cars because I'm the first road where you could turn right. And people then want to go to Old South or cut through it, the traffic, everything. It was like no Indian carnival without any people. You can walk the streets, beat, you know, every they had every single road sort of blocked. You know, Trinity Road was manned by police, Townsend Road. It was really inside, it was properly enforced, beautiful. People were on four, right? There was quite a few people there, but no cars, none of that. It was really nice. Kids could go out and play on the roads and things like you know, it was really, really good in that sense. For residents, it was really good in that sense of the you know, late nights, cars spinning around, music, that kind of thing. But where they went wrong was the fact that they let, you know, they told, why did they say on the Twitter feed, please use Beaconsfield, you know, as an entrance point to all this? No. So, yeah, ridiculous. that's what I'm talking about. No, can I just say, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't think it should be allowed. Do you think they would allow this in, in Ealing Broadway, right? My neighbor is 92, 93 years old. Yeah. His carers couldn't get here that night to put him to bed because they couldn't get from South or Broadway to here to put him to bed because of the traffic and the cordons. They, they were sent, the carer actually rang me at 10 o'clock and asked me if I would put my neighbor to bed because they were stuck in South or Broadway and they couldn't get here. You know, it's not, oh, it, it's, it's just wrong. You know, everybody gets, gets, gets drawn into it. You know, uh -oh. sorry, Stag here. I don't believe the, it's about the businesses. Do the businesses do the business come out in the morning and clear up the rubbish that their patrons that's have a, caused? No. That's the job. Sorry, uh, Jan, can anyone, everyone hear me? Yeah, sure. Uh, what, 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 Jan, you raised the issue, as I said, you can't, it's just a win or lose situation, isn't it? Yeah. If, if, if they put the cordons off, you are going to get blockages, aren't you? You're going to get concentration. Yeah, but, yeah, but, of so yeah, even if, even if they hadn't put the, the, the blockages up, right, people still wouldn't have been able to get through South. That's or, what I'm saying. I mean, it's a no-win right? situation. The either carer, way, hold on get, a minute, let you, me finish now. When the carer comes here to my neighbour, he goes to one of the roads where, probably where you live, off South or Broadway, where they care for another gentleman there that needs two carers four times a day. And she said they couldn't get to him either. You know, like the other night when they were celebrating the cricket win, she said they couldn't get to this kid, to this gentleman in South or Broadway because the whole roads were blocked. I mean, it's just ridiculous. People hanging out of cars, you know, hanging on the on, on top of roofs of cars. Uh, on the cricket Legal. day, I think, on the cricket day, which was just on the weekend, 
That was totally unexpected. I think uh, it was a it was a local. It was like a local derby, like uh, what you can say, it's Liverpool and Everton. This is this is this is one of many games. So this. So this yeah, is but this happen shouldn't again have happened. Bottom line, shouldn't yeah. be allowed. I'm sorry, but it shouldn't wasn't, be allowed. There was no cars. There was, no, uh, there was no, there was a concentration of a few people uh, uh, where Hamburg uh, have a look on the website yeah, have bit. a look on this there South Pole finest I just looked at it maybe over people. there but it wasn't um, as bad as Eid or Diwali or any of, of those other days because it was a spontaneous thing which happened about 7, 8 o'clock in the evening and it didn't last until 11 o'clock but Jan I, I sympathise empathise with your good self but as I said if either okay, way so either way you are going to get a build of traffic. There's going to be things, but see what needs to be done is it can quite easily be solved because what police can do is where Park Avenue is, don't allow any traffic, but allow it only for carers or emergency services. They, what they've done here, as I yeah, said, but I saw it of, again. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say something here. If you try to get me, if you're the carer, imagine he's coming from Ealing, he's going to go down. Where Dormers is, Path of Petrol Station, turning to Park Avenue. But at Park Avenue, you have a street, you know, police there. They only allow residents of that particular road there. Yeah. And that way, carers of people who want to go to Old Southall or through Beaconsfield Road, they'll go straight down Park Avenue all the way past the Gurdwara. There won't be no traffic. Beaconsfield, they could, you could, it's, it's, it's easily planned. It, there's no big deal. So yeah, but you know, when, when people are being affected Sorry, to the Ange. point, you know, that they, you know, cannot get to very vulnerable people, something is going wrong with the planning. I'm really conscious that um, Amrik yeah, had his hand up for a very, very no. long time. Can we bring Amrik into the discussion? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to wrap up. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Amrik, I'm Amrik? Doing... Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Hi, oh, good yeah. evening. Thank good you for evening. being so patient. That's all right. Um, I can shed some light onto this uh, discussion about the police. Um, when I was a special constable, I was um, there was a, some sort of celebration going on. Um, and um, I think it was Diwali or something. And all these cars were going up and down the road. And I was stopping them and turning them back and basically saying, you, you know, don't, don't go down Broadway or otherwise we're going to... Um, give you tickets and, and penalties. Um, the first time it happened, it wasn't that bad. It, um, it, it, was, it, was, it was very quiet, um, but it started growing. And then we had, uh, I sat down with the chief inspector and we managed a program. What they did last time was close off um, anything coming onto the Broadway uh, from the side road. So anything down uh, the Broadway coming into, turning left or right, we were blocking them and we were only allowing people in um, down down to Dane Road and we were making them go through Dane Road all the way around. And that stopped 95% of all the problems that were being caused because all people wanted to do was just rev their cars and, and race down Broadway, which was a danger to uh, children and families and anybody else who just wanted to enjoy the evening. Eating Council won't do anything because, hey, there's no police. Um, they've, really, they've closed down south of police station. Uh, there's nothing there for us. We, we can't go anywhere to, uh, to, to, um, to complain. Um, you know, and, and this last one was really bad because you're right, Broadway was jam-packed. Um, not just Broadway, um, all the way down Western Road, um, up to Slough. Uh, it took my sister-in-law nearly 45 minutes to get home from my house. And we're only five minutes from, um, uh, from the M4. So it's, 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 it's frustrating that we're not being listened to. Um, I, I don't know what's, what to do with the, all this because, we, yes, um, I don't know about half these meetings that are going on, the public forums that are going on. I, I don't see anything in the papers. I don't see anything... Um, on, on Twitter feeds or anything that th these things are coming up. I think sometimes deliberately the Ealing Council is blocking us um, and not, not listening to us. Uh, you know, we, we complain as cash about the, um, about the um, uh, pollution today and, and, and the, um, 
uh, uh, the bad smell, the odor that was coming out today. And for the first time, this lady on the phone admitted that there was more than one phone call. Normally they just say, okay, we'll look into it. She goes, oh, we better send someone out because there's been quite a few complaints, which yeah, I find because, disgraceful. Because just I before that, I put that on the chat, Amrik, um, I did, I did um, send an email off to, um, to one of the councillors. Yeah. Um, just before I put that message, I was just, I was just got on the A three one two, and I just, I told Ange like literally my windows were closed. That smell came through my vents, and I thought the car was on fire because that's how it smelled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Burning, but, but the, 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 well, and then I, I straight away opened my window and I noticed it. So I put that message, and I was just, I was very curious because none of the chimneys were. Um, were pumping out what I noticed yeah. anyway and it was I mean I've smelt it before so I knew it would only be one of the three corporates yeah. either Tarmac, Conway or Berkeley um, but what are they doing about it and this is the point so I'm very happy that someone did ring you back I'm, I'm very actually shocked if I'm being totally honest with you I'm very shocked because a lot of these people who are given these positions are told not to interact with the public to an extent now, what are they getting paid to do? To you know, an EPO, an Environmental Protection Officer, is job to protect the public if the environment is bad, whether that's air pollution, whether that's um, whatever it is to do with the environment, predominantly air pollution. They are the first point of contact. Yes, I mean I write it to the council straight away because um, obviously I don't have the EPO's number, but that's why I put it on the group, and I'm glad um, that the rest of of yeah. the team did write to them and I'm very happy that someone did get back to you because yet yeah, numerous times I'm like I'm pretty sure you're aware we have written to um all these people and they don't respond so very I'm actually shocked that she got back to you but in a good way I'm shocked because I'm very happy that she did because now at least it's a step forward for us yeah I, I think that... can I just say um sorry to interrupt yeah. um I regularly contact the EPO and have a conversation with him. Um, nine times out of 10, he doesn't actually detect um, what I am reporting, uh, doesn't find the source of the odor or works in a very, very prescriptive way that he's got to do his planned work first uh, before responding to any uh, complaints, you know, reactive work. Um, so nine times out of 10, by the time he turns up, the odor um, has dissipated. Today, it was off the scale yep. all day long. Um, just before this meeting started, I went out into my garden to pick up my washing and I could still smell the odor. And a neighbor of mine did a little, a little walkabout um, not far from where we live on Johnson Street, there's an industrial estate. There are two incinerators on this estate. And he actually photographed one in operation. So uh, the incinerator door was open. You could see the fire inside uh, and propped up all around the incinerator was offcuts of, um, uh, I don't know if it's MDF or chip, or, but it's covered in melamine, which is a type of plastic. Um, and it's something that is possibly carcinogenic. You know, I smelt it in my home. Admittedly, I had the windows open, but why shouldn't have? Why shouldn't I have my windows open in the summertime? Um, it was just a horrible, toxic stink that gave me a sore throat, and to be quite honest, made me feel depressed, demoralised, demotivated. I couldn't think straight. I didn't know where I was coming or going. Um, it was, it just swamped the whole area. Um, and my frustration is that I couldn't even speak to the EPO about it. The mobile number um, was unavailable. I tried the same number that I shared with you, Amrik. Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't get through. I've tried three different times. Um, I left uh, my number for a callback. Unfortunately, I was in haze and I missed the callback. 
So I tried again, it was still within office hours and I think I was hanging on for 10 minutes or so. I thought, I can't wait any longer, I've got stuff to do. Um, but how many other people have tried to report to Ealing Council and simply do not speak to anybody in customer services? And I did also resort to sending an email to the South, I think it's South Loader's um, email address. I haven't had a response. As far as I'm concerned, Ealing Council go out of their way not to actually do anything about odours that are blighting our lives. It's not just a bad smell. And this is what Peter Mason try, tries to play as. We're talking about inhaling toxic air pollution that essentially is killing us. I was away, I was in Sunbury um, from Saturday afternoon through to Monday evening. Felt absolutely fine. In actual fact, I did a couple of long walks uh, with um, a friend and I returned uh, last night and today I feel crippled with the air pollution. It's poleaxed me and it makes me so angry that somebody in the council or more than one person sanctioned as having two incinerators in the middle of an industrial, uh, sorry, in the middle of a res residential area. If you ever go to that industrial estate, by the way, it looks like the wild, wild west, like anything goes, like it's lawless. There's no control, no health and safety. Anybody could wander around the back. You know, it was a member of the public who took a photograph of the incinerator. Um, a child could quite easily walk around there having a nose. It's really dangerous. Sorry. Um, Amrik, I interrupt you. You say you've got to go, but do you want to come back into the con uh, the conversation? I think he's left. He's gone. Okay. He's shut off. But uh, I think Sagir wants to come back in. I need to shoot in a minute, Ange, by the way, but I'm all safe for a bit. Uh, Can you switch just, me back to hosting, please, then? Uh, yeah, just give me one sec. Sagir, are you in? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm having trouble here, even... Um, the Getting um, let's see, start the video again. I can't even start the video, mate. What's going on? Can you hear me though? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. All right. You know, it was a quick question. Uh, Amrik mentioned that he was a special constable, so I was going to ask him a few questions in regards to, um, you know, what we discussed earlier on about the police, but he's disappeared, so I'll leave it until next time, man. Yeah, sure. I'm sure hopefully he'll return to a forthcoming meeting. Sure, sure. Yeah, but just to say the air pollution today was absolutely horrific. And I don't see why these companies are allowed to set up in the middle of a residential area. I was going to um, ask you, Angela, sorry, what health implication does it you know, have on humans having such an incinerator in a residential place? You said they're burning plastic. I'm sure there's rules and regulations, you know, like how the quality of the pollutants was measured, well, incorrectly, but, you know, from the green core site, the incinerators, for instance, must have some kind of operating level where certain substances or chemicals or gases have to, you know, be below certain, certain You number. would think so, Saki. It doesn't seem to be that way. I'm sure it has because to be. Because of the size, I think it's the size of the incinerators. Yeah. Oh, they, they get away with it They don't need to have an environmental permit. Mm. But they're burning seriously harmful substances. Yeah, so, what, so what we do? You know, so what we do? We go and start burning something outside Eating Town or the Percival House. See, that's I'd like to go and burn something about. outside of Peter Mason's home. Or Peter Mason's and house. Yeah, and or, yeah, one of the councillors. Because first of all, we say Hamilton Dinser. I mean, would they like it if mm. their neighbour every day started up a bonfire and chucked a load of plastic on it? No, no, of course not. So what you do, you fight fire with fire. That's with any cause. Look back in history. So, yeah, let's start off with the councillors. They're just newly been, been newly elected, just three and a half, coming up to four months. I haven't seen a single one of them come up walking, asking residents what's going on. They haven't shown up to the meetings about the Yak and the Dominion car park. Surprise, surprise. Where are they? Why were they elected? Look, look, looking after themselves. But, you know, I, I feel like 
you know, but, a group of us could go and stand outside of homes, you know, where we've got the address and, and, and say, look, you do not communicate with us. No, they don't. don't hold, you don't hold ward forums, right? Exactly. Hillington, sorry, Hayes is Labour. And on the council website, they regularly advertise various ward forums that take place in Hayes. What's so different about Southall that we don't have ward forums? Because when, you look at, when you look at the demographics, there's not a huge difference mm. between Hayes and Southall. And I think it's just remiss that we have these councillors who are not accountable to us in any way. I sent a letter to Peter Mason about the air quality monitoring of the gas works, yeah? Mm. Not had a response at all. Yeah, see, I contacted this, this, the councillor, so the leader's office, to say I sent Peter Mason an email. I've not had a response. I've heard nothing from uh, his office. Mm -hmm. I mean, who do they think they are at the end of the day? No, see, this is that, that, that is one of the major problems here. For instance, uh, it's a bit of a side note. Uh, but remember, Angela, I made you aware of the, this canal side project, this Southall water side, whatever project, five sites along the Grand Union Canal, Spikes Bridge, uh, Banks, uh, is it Banks, uh, Banks side, uh, the wreck, uh, uh, what is it, Havelock Estate and something further on. They've got millions of pounds of funding from the National Lottery and a few organisations. Um, Let's go Southall is part of it as well who's getting the funding alongside with the, the authority that you know, the waterways authorities were in charge of the canal. And they said, what we're going to do is sort of uh, beautify the area for residents and as such. So now the real reason is they're beautifying it for Barclay Group and other, you know, high rise towers are going to be going up eventually all over here, certain places. So it's just to attract outsiders, affluent people to come and make Southall, you know, Change, change the views of Southall. At the moment, everyone thinks Southall is an Asia, Asian area full of, you know, this, this, that. It's just got, you know, no one wants to go. Like, we wouldn't want to live in Gerard's Cross. We'd be dying. You, that you wait until the kids start graffitiing the mural because they've got nowhere to go. All right. You know, the They're going to be wandering right. around aimlessly. All right. Yeah, this is a mural that I was going to talk about. Now, there's a, if you go where I live, there's a TA centre and, you know, we're over the bridge and the side of the bridge, they put a mural and you must have seen the pictures a few days ago and everyone was saying, oh, Sharma's there, a few councillors are there and everyone's saying, how oh, come the, the residents of Southall were may aware of this particular opening? Because these are just photo opportunities for the councillors and th they'll take their own peeps, let a few people take a photo, put it on social media and everyone thinks, you know, outside, it's all nitty gritty. It isn't. What it was, it's, it's that, yeah, I'm just highlighting that problem which you just said that, you know, they don't want the residents to go there because we're going to ask questions. Now, I went there about three weeks ago, just along the canal, and I saw the actual mural being, half of it was done. There were three artists, and I looked at it, they had the manor house in there, a few other sites, and I asked one of them, excuse me, there's one missing. You should have, there's an important site that you should have on the mural. He goes, what? I go, have a look across the street, you know, on the other side. They go, what, what? I go, listen, this is the Hambro Tavern. Why haven't you got all, that on there? One of the guys goes, wait, wait, mate, we're not here to promote drinking. I go, no, that wasn't my intention. Do you know what the Hambro Tavern represents for Southall? Just the re for the residents of Southall? Or nationally, what it represents in race equality? That particular year when... The reason we know why Hamburg Tower was burned down, but they call it the Southall riots, but that was a summer of discontent, as how the media puts it. You had riots in Brixton, Birmingham, and uh, Liverpool Toxins, I think, hands with, so, you know, one, two, four different sites within a few few weeks or a month, month or two of each other. And that changed the landscape of the ethnic minorities, Blacks and Asians, Totally, because the government actually then set up and said, no way, you know, we need to start listening. Things need to change. Education was changed. This had a lot of profound effect. And the, I am totally saddened at the fact that Hambro Tavern 
is being sold off and turned into um, how many is there 16 story hotel or something my god and no representation does, does was made of really need a hotel you've got no um, no, no, the hotel doesn't. down the road um higher it, place oh yeah there's one there yeah but and you listen to this uh they didn't know anything about that at all they, they were younger I mean, they weren't more than 30 one of them understood when i mentioned the other places and what the significance was but you know that that place needs to be you know preserved it could be still set as it is and dedicated to it could be used as a community hub bloody hell we don't have you know yaks closing down could be an old old person's the center the local ward team could use it we need more presence over there. they don't they don't the, you know the council doesn't want the community coming yeah. together they want us to be in of course but I tell you, I'm nobody communicating uh, Andy, like I one word in nobody there. crossing you know cultural divides they don't want that yeah what it is i tell you what the, what the plan is now they're going to build that 16 story building there and then in a few years time you know what they're going to do they're going to say bankside this if you've been down bankside road it's small cottages really you know door leads straight into the front room like how it is on hammond road or something you know we're we're opposite the dominion center uh, um, uh, sorry uh, not the dominion center but uh, himalaya himalaya cinema himalaya market they're going to say it's not fit. they're going to knock that down and turn that into flats as well and it's then they're going to have the canal there. That's how they, that's why they're beautifying those sites. You understand? They're using public money, which is meant to supposed to benefit for that. They're going to put a few benches up. They're not going to even spend that two million. I'm, I'm so, so that's what, in look, look at the big picture. That's what's going to happen. I guarantee you that, that they're going to build a whole row of 16 story flats, like what they've done behind the, you know, Beaconsley Road. Yeah, that's, it's, that's not, it's, the, not, it's yeah. not. It's not. And, and it's not stopping. And then, what these Barclay Group and the council are doing—they're thinking long term. They're using public money, as it, in the you know, falsely, fraudulently to say we are going to. I mean, what the hell? How many people actually use the canal in the South West? None. None. They're going to put a few benches. That's all they're going to do, and maybe put a few bushes. Well, and they're going to make it safe, haven't they? Because if there's, you know, somebody said prostitution in that area and. You know, crime. You know, it's not going to attract people to use it for, uh, you know, leisure. You know, and as I said, you know, murals can become defaced. Yes, yeah, well, honestly, uh, you, you know, know it's not it's not going to change. You know, the yeah, safety yeah. of the area. Sure, Angela. Just the can, can one we bring thing. in? Can we just bring just in? Just one thing. Can I just say one thing? Okay. Just one thing. I saw the mural. If you have, if you get an opportunity to have a look at it, my God, kindergarten. Primary school children could have done a better job. I wonder how much was actually spent on that. Yeah, I think Honestly, the artist got paid. Is it about around about three thousand pounds? But the God. thing is, there was no. I, mean, I don't know who they consulted consult in the community, but they could have made it some kind of, you know. Yeah, survey. and you know what? What would you the like artist, to see on a mural? Um, Angela, Angela, the artist. I asked them. You know, did you do the design? They go, yeah, but I, they go, Ealing Council. They had to submit it, and Ealing Council had to okay it. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, mm. probably mm. somebody in the know awarded the contract. Of course, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. As yeah, I said, yeah. they could have got local school children, Tudor Road, Beaconsfield, Blair Peach to do something. They would have loved it. It would have a good experience for them yeah. as well. Well, like you say, it's wasting uh, yeah, public, public, public funds, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw it. I, I personally didn't think much myself because um, I couldn't really connect much of it with... Southall, oh, and, actually um, physically or just on the, on oh, the, just the photographs, just the right. photographs. Yeah. The but obviously, here. it was all very low key, you know, the grand yeah. opening. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, Jan has been waiting patiently. Jan, oh. can you unmute yourself and join back in, please? Jan, are you still with us? Yeah, thanks, Angie. I was having trouble unmuting. I had to wait for you to unmute me. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up before I have to go, well, two things, really. One thing I've noticed in the last um, the last couple of weeks um, is that at about 7 a.m. most mornings now, opposite the Gudawara in Western Road, it seems to be now a new... Um, a new pickup point for you know like in the King Street um I can't 
You know, please, like, play, um, please play music. Can you turn off your music, please, or mute yourself? Sorry, Jan, let me just find out who's not muted. It's forgive. It's one of my... Right. Right. Yeah, um, I'll start again. I mean, um, I go out walking most mornings by about seven o'clock in the morning, and there seems to be um, a new pickup place for workers opposite the Gurdwara on Western Road. Right. Um, at seven o'clock in the morning, you're having vans coming along, parking up on the pavements, picking workers up. This is a, a new thing that's happening recently. Are they um, heading in the direction of Hayes or towards? They're just, they're, just hand, they're just hanging around on both sides of the road, on top of the pavements, um, probably about 15, 20 men hanging around again. I think it's the, I think it's a new, it's the, the equivalent of King Street, but it's now coming down here. And another thing I've noticed about in this area is um, the amount of drug dealing going on south or in South or Recre Recreational Park now. Um, normally about half six, seven o'clock in the morning, probably about 20 people come along, hang around the entrance to the wreck between Manorway and Leamington Road. Um, and they hang around, the dealer comes along and uh, they're, they're just dealing. Then they, they scatter within the park, taking their drugs in all, in all, just sitting in on the grass, sitting on the benches, um, taking drugs. Now I've had a few elderly Asian ladies coming up to me saying that they don't feel safe there anymore. I've reported it to the police, um, but nothing seems to be happening. Because Jan, you had a conversation with the police, I don't know if he was an inspector, but <clears throat> the police officer who was at um, Sharma's meeting. So did anything come of that? No, nothing. Well, I didn't hear anything. I mean, it's really disappointing, isn't it? Because people want to go walking at different times. Um, and that would include, you know, the times that you're talking about where the dealers are around and about, especially, you know, if they've got a job to go and do. And it's really sad to hear that old ladies don't feel safe because we mm. know they go to the wreck. We know that they like walking and talking in their groups. Mm. Um, and it's just really, really off-putting I mean you know there's obviously a need for patrolling to deter you know these dealers I do um, think Ange, that they've been that they, they've been moved on from another area um I don't know if it was you remember a few well maybe a year ago um that um they were in Featherstone Terrace and stuff around there and they were moved on from there I'm wondering if this is the same lot but um, very, very unsavory characters. Um, I mean, they're aggressive. I mean, we walked, past, me and my friend, we walked past the other day, and my friend just tend to glance at them to see what they were up, what they were up to, um, and one verbally abused her. Um, it's just so, totally unacceptable. So much so now that my friend who lives right near the park, um, she won't leave the park and go home. She'll go out the park and go the long way round just so that when she does go in our house, they don't actually see where she lives. That's so, so sad to hear. Mm. Um, you know, it's just frustrating that, you know, you've got, if you like, intelligence, you know, you see it with your own eyes, you know the timings, you know the locations. Why aren't the police doing anything? Mm. Um, but I tell you another, if you like, hot spot. And I don't know whether the council repaired this. You know the underpass um, by Spencer Street, and it was at it was locked off, yeah, and gated. Well, you know somebody broke the gate, and I was actually standing there one afternoon in the children's playground with a council officer who I met about uh, the basketball court and um, the Moogers in um, the wreck and. Uh, we started off in the wreck and then he met me at Spencer Street and there were various people coming and going um, from that um, underpass and they looked suspicious right because you know they walked in and a few minutes later they walked out so my suspicion is that some kind of drug dealing was going on anyway I sent an email to uh, the director of uh, housing and safer communities and I said look you know the gates broken um, 
in my presence, a council officer also saw suspicious looking figures entering the underpass and then leaving shortly afterwards. Um, and this is right by a children's playground. And funnily enough, I was having a chat with a neighbour about it. And she said, what they need to do is just brick it up. So clearly, however they secured the entrance wasn't, uh, you know, secure enough. Um, but it just shows, you know, the council um, and the police combined are not doing enough. Um, because, you know, why should anybody feel that it's unsafe to go to their local rec or feel that they can only go at certain times? Um, it's just so disconcerting that, you know, dealers feel, well, yeah, I can deal. Um, and, uh, you know, this is my territory. You know, why aren't there police um, patrolling? Or um, I think the council used to use their own enforcement officers. Um, you know, I think people do it because they know, um, you know, there's no sort of law enforcement around and about. Um, and yeah, it's really, really sad. Um, see, I'm wondering just, if all yeah. these, um, see, I'm wondering if all these now stabbing um, incidents, is this something to do with drugs and rival gangs or, or whatever? Because like I said at the beginning of the meeting, you know, it does seem to be getting worse around here. Who knows? The drugs and crime go together, don't they? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's got to be tackled. And I think it's the young, you know, the thing is, though, when you look at, I'm not saying, obviously, it's young people, but they've got nowhere to go, right? The Young Adult Centre, that's set to close. I mean, my kids say to me, there's nothing for us to do in Southall. And when kids say that, you know, when they go out and about, if they're just wandering around doing nothing in particular, that's when they're going to be vulnerable to be drawn into dodgy behaviour. Um, all this council cares about is putting up high rises and not providing the facilities that people need, you know, to build a community. It's more than just, you know, boxes for them to live in. We need community centres. I mean, it's so bad in Southall that I used to go to Hayes and Harlington Community Centre. And that's a great little community centre. I used to go to Weight Watchers there, um, but they've got, you know, different groups meeting there. They've also got um, a bar inside. You know, we don't have anything like that in Southall as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, I, I tend to spend a lot more time um, going to Hayes because, you know, S Southall doesn't really offer me anything, um, nor my kids. And that's a real shame. Um, but, you know, all they care about is high rises because they are catering for affluent people who can jump on uh, Crossrail to go into central London for their social life and for their work. Um, and I'm not in that category. So, mm. yeah, there are so many challenges to making Southall a really safe, happy and harmonious place. And even going back to um, you know, the lack of facilities, you can see it on the gas works development. I decided uh, to do a walking challenge. So um, sometimes I used to walk from my home all the way to the gas works. Um, and there were teenagers there. This is no word of a lie. It was early evening uh, in the summer, daylight, and they were inhaling, you know those, I don't know if you've seen those big blue canisters on the street, just lying on pavements. They were inflating balloons and inhaling nitrous oxide. And they weren't doing it under cover of darkness, right? They were doing it in the park, right within um, the vision of children um, in the playground. Um, 
but yeah, you know, if developers are allowed to get away with not providing a community center, um, you know, I dread to think also thinking beyond this, what are the waiting lists like going to be like for the schools? Um, I know when um, my daughter joined Featherston High School, the head teacher at his uh, presentation said, um, there's a waiting list for this school. You know, it's set to get worse. Um, and the people who we appoint as our representatives really do not care because, you know, they have an exit plan, I'm sure, you know, not to live in Southall indefinitely. They're not invested in this area. They're not committed. Um, as you said, with Peter Mason, it's just um, a stepping stone for him. You know, I find that he's got a very superior attitude um, and quite frankly, looks down on Southall uh, as he does with uh, Leicester as well. Thank you very much for coming, Jan. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Must go and uh, take care, everyone. Yeah, really bye -bye. fruitful meeting. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. OK, are there any other contributions tonight? Any other points that, you know, we can take forward? I mean, I think, you know, Sagia, you did raise some really good points about, you know, us having constructive alternatives. And one of the things I would like to see is that, you know, if the council cannot do ward forums in person, why can't they do as we do on a monthly basis? an online forum um, because what I find there's a massive brick wall you know that I email um, I contact on whatsapp and you know there isn't open and transparent communication and I mean I think for me the pressing matter right now uh, is the air pollution from the incinerators. And I think we have to strategize and look at what we can do about this. And I wouldn't be averse, actually, you know, maybe a small group of us can go to um, local councillors who we know, you know, still live, uh, you know, within the ward and, and basically have the conversation face to face with them. Um, you know, I've invited um, Councillor Camelgit Dinser to go on a walkabout. He didn't say no. Uh, unfortunately, at the time, I believe he was in India, um, but I'll make that um, invitation again and point out all the things that perhaps he doesn't experience living on his road, but what I experience living where I live. Over to you, Sagir. Can you unmute yourself? Um, Angela, yeah, I do agree with what, what you know the couple of points you made towards the end. I think we need to sort of step up a bit more. Uh, you know, our voices are not being heard at all. I mean, as I said, there is a you know process where the our our voices are meant to be heard by our local ward councillors. They don't want to hear them. So what do we do? We bypass them. Now, it it looks like you know way Ealing Council or the Labour the Labour Party is governing Southwell and Ealing is in such a state that they're nearly really sort of is a mini state within a mini, you know state. Now there's obviously Labour Party. It's been around for ages. It's governed by certain, um, you know, it's centrally governed by Labour headquarters somewhere. So what we do instead of writing to Ealing Council, Peter Mason, Sharma, you, you know, you, there's going to be something where we could write directly to these parties and say, listen, what's going on here? 
Uh, Angela, you just said that, you know, you say, hey, that, that's got Labour councillors, that yet they managed to have a ward a forum, as you say, in person. That's right. Yep. So what is the difference between uh, Hayes and Southall? It's just the canal. The dem demographics are still the same. So how can one area right next to another be so different? So what it is, if, you know, you with any kind of complaint or protest, you deal with it at source. If that is a go, you raise it up to the next step. I believe we've done a few steps further up, but now it needs to go directly to people right at the top. And once, because they, before they know, Sharma and Eden Council are just saying, everything's all right, guys, you know, we're fine here, we're running south or well. They want to, because they want to stay in power. The, the, no one from the top comes down here and has a look and finds out what's going on. It's like you're, you're a business person. You've got a few sites around the world or the country. You just stay in your head. You know, the big bosses, the board, just stay in, in a certain location. They'll phone up that person who's in charge of the place in Birmingham and say, how's it going? It's fine, mate. Don't worry about it. You know, but are they going to know? It's the job of that particular, you know, area manager or something that area to report anything. But if he's going to, wants to keep his job and he's not doing it properly, he's going to say, push the mate. Don't worry about it, boys. You know? Once it gets highlighted to the top, I'm sure if we do persevere, something will be, you know, filter down to these guys here at local level. The other thing, yes, there is nothing for us stopping us legally to do a stand in protest. We don't have to give the police a notice. We could go and stand outside the councillor's house, make noise as well if we want to, hold placards, film it, see what their reaction is going to be. That is the only way forward, you know, that's what. That's a beautiful thing, what you said, and the right way forward. Are you with me on it, Saki? Because, you know, I was at my wit's end today, to be mm -hmm. quite frank, inhaling toxic substances into my lungs. And I'm not even thinking about myself. I think to myself, thank God my kids were still at their dad. You know, they're not at home. But I'm off to work on Thursday. And if it's the same, they're going to be trapped inhaling this crap and they deserve to have a life they deserve to have a long life they of don't course. deserve to have their life shortened because somebody who makes i don't know what they make whether it's kitchen cabinets or whatever wants to make a living at the expense of the community it's simple not we burn stuff outside their house or, the, or their workplace on the pavement yeah you know, not you know to that extent but there's ways of doing peaceful protests. Yeah, I'm going to talk I to you like that. You're offline, seriously, honestly. offline about it, because mm -hmm. how is it, quite honestly, you know, I don't know if you know um, Johnson Street. I've heard of it, uh, yeah. But, but it's, you know, opposite, you've got houses. I live a stone throw away. It's a residential area. And to be quite frank, it seems like anything goes uh on this estate um and it seems as though it's off limits or you know Ealing council seem to treat it as being off limits mm -hmm. because yeah. you know how can you have an incinerator and the doors propped open you know where's the health and safety there's no barriers there's nothing to prevent a member of the public walking up, nothing to prevent a child or a group of children wandering around. It, you know, you, 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 yeah, I'd like to take you on the stage. Flipping, it feels like it's flipping lawless. No, honestly, earlier on, you mentioned about these officers. I think Ricky from South of Finance mentioned this. Well, they're not doing their jobs properly. It's like, you know, living in the Wild West. You're right, because I have seen it. What, what you know, Ricky said. I've seen these officers at parking go into local restaurants and they're given kebabs. Honestly. So listen, you know, so that, what, what you're saying, they're corrupt. Rather, they're corrupt then. No, 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 no. It's, maybe it's not corrupt, but listen, if they accept those kebabs, they get used to it. Maybe the shopkeeper's enticing him, then they're not gonna get reported, are they? We don't know what goes on, but I've seen it. Yeah. What, I, I've seen that. With, I've been, I was in a shop, but honestly, how many kebabs would you like? No, not yet. I'll come back later. I'm, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so where's, where's their integrity? Yeah, there the is no integrity. Exactly. Mm. And that's why, how do we know the businesses aren't paying off certain officers from Ealing Council? You know, like that incinerator guy. 
Like, you know, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it, it, I'm telling you, it, yeah. it, what they say sometimes is facts are stranger than fiction. And it's all it seems like more than coincidence to me. I could not get hold of the environmental protection officer today. Mm. Um, and what happened today, you know, it wasn't just um, an intermittent episode. It was all day long from this mm. morning. Oh, Angela, just, just sorry. I remember a few years ago, Ealing Council had this uh, app that you could download called Report It. So any issue like, you know, noise pollution, such nuisance, antisocial behaviour, you just click on that app. Obviously, you have to register and they verify you know, you're a resident because they could check your name and, you you know, you're on the on the uh, poll taxpayer or a house. Owner. And it was beautiful and people would get back to you. But I, I, there was a few... I have, I have used Report It. But I tell oh, I you something, just going, just going back to the fly tipping, mm. because where I live, you know, you'll encounter fly tipping, right? You walk down the road, two minutes later, another pile of bags. Then you walk on, another three minutes later, another, I don't know, probably this time, a sofa or whatever. You cannot easily complete your journey in a given time and report on report it you know it's good for people who live in areas where they just have an occasional problem yeah mm. but where i live it's so endemic that so if i would so need endemic. to pack up my job right <laughs> and make it a full-time job just to go on a walk about well, 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 that's not your responsibility well I, well I do i take photographs oh yeah sure you've been doing that for a and while i yeah. put it on the streets and stuff and you can and, you know like i say it's not even it's not obviously across the all south or because i just do it in the area where i live of course yeah. but you can see how bad it looks yeah you so, know so someone from the council needs to really look this is a major problem so they need to so so yeah in the sense that they need to put extra manpower in there for a few weeks start finding people you know, that's how you do it. So this seems to be a total, you know, loss of any inact. You know, this it's like the word is we don't know about it. We ain't, we ain't going to do anything about it. But this way, they should be doing their job. They're getting paid in the sense that, but I think that, that maybe they're also council. scared of the councillors because the councillors, or I heard about one councillor, mm. um, and the attitude was when they were speaking to the council officer is, I employ you. You know, I tell you what to do. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, see, see, that's wrong. And that's... they abuse their power. Yeah, yeah. And this ain't India. Potentially, yeah. I suppose you know the poor council officer, unless you know they've got a backbone, um, yeah. feel intimidated. Of course, yeah, that's intimidation, and that's you know that that councillor is is going beyond his remit. There, that's not his job. He should be fired. So, you know, it's the attitude of Victorian attitude, but, you know, way back 100 years ago, some was in a third world country where people fear people in authority like that, when they shouldn't. But in, this is the nature of things. And that, that needs to be highlighted, honestly. Yeah, but, you know, there has to be some kind of sea change that mm. people recognise that they are voting for people who are not into public service. They are just feathering their own nests uh you know to get inside information from the council to benefit their own business that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, of course uh, that's what it is. you it's know it's just they're just there to get in that position and then abuse it in a sense and that's that's abuse of public uh, public office isn't it in italy it goes very on but that's controlled very, by very, the mafia. very difficult to to prove yeah, yeah. um but, but I mean, you know that there has to be a sea change that these people can they might look like you right in terms of skin color but they do not care about you nor your family right because how is it that you know there was a counselor at Sharma's meeting for well it was all right to walk out of the meeting right he was on the panel to have a mm. conversation with residents outside you know, I sat there aghast thinking, See, you know, where, does he think, where does he think he is? Yeah. There has to be a change where people think, well, you know, we're not living colonial times anymore. Exactly, that's what it is. Right? It's, that, it, it's what it is. It's the residents' fault in the sense as well, because they think these councillors are gods. You know, they're that position, so they treat them that way. The councillors know that as well. So, you know, 
they make they make the most of it. Yeah, well, you know, times have to change. Um, mm. no, and honestly, I, I hope that the younger generation think differently, behave differently, and scrutinize and don't just follow the crowd. Yeah, and whose job is it to give him that mindset? It's ours. We need to teach him that. They're young. I mean, you know, we need to tell him, look, this is what it is. This is how it is. And, you know, kids learn. At the moment, I tell you what a lot of people when I went counseling is, oh, it doesn't matter who you are in. They're all the same. You see, what? <laughs> they don't realize that what the vote is, the power of the vote. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what, what are they doing? You uh, know, when you look at high rises going up everywhere, which our children will not be able to afford. And anyway, why should they live in a shoebox in the sky? Yeah. You know, looking at South Hall, um, sorry, South Road, and mm. the congestion that went on for months, going into a, over a year. Mm. So bad. Mm. At times, I used to get off the bus and walk from South Hall Green to South Hall Broadway. It was probably a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. But would that have happened in a more affluent part of the borough? And I just see, think, what, what, the, what the hell is going on? I, you I, know, I, I, I regularly, um, during the holidays, um, he would catch the bus or drive along uh, oh. South Road over the bridge. They still have traffic cones. What are the traffic cones there for? <laughs> well, Angela, see... The problem with Southall is it's unique. Do you know why we have this problem of traffic in Southall? Just look at the map, yeah? On the on the west side, we're cut off by the Grand Union Canal. Hmm. Then, obviously, you've got the canal bit there. There's two bridges at the bottom of the wreck. Then we've got the railway line as well, which cuts it off. Yeah, that's right. I've yeah. talked about the, uh, my area, you know, uh, New Southall, yeah? Then we've got Spikes Bridge on the top. Yeah. So, for us lot, the only exit and entrance points are the Hayes Bridge, the Canal yeah. Bridge, uh, Lady Margaret Road, yeah, yeah. the top bit, and the train bridge, Southall, and then obviously uh, the Iron Bridge as well. So most towns, what you do, you don't have to go on the main road, you could go on the side routes and, you know, cut through the traffic and go that way. So there's only four places we could go in and out, you know, Southall on top of the railway line. Now, one of the things that they said 20 years ago when they were gonna, there were plans to turn the gas works into housing was they were going to build a road from Hayes Bypass along the railway line all the way, you know, down the station, follow it through behind Park Avenue, behind the Gurdwara, all the way to the Iron Bridge. Had they done that, really? <laughs> honestly, the, you, you do some research, you'll see it. I actually read that. It was in the Informer, it was in the Leader, it was in the Indian Council Publications. Had they done that, what would have that, that would have been excellent because people going would have could have bypassed that straight. So, you know, they could have gone from coming say from Mealing and you want to go to Hayes or Oxbridge, you go to Iron Bridge, follow that light, that, that road, straight to Hayes bypass and go up either towards the airport or you know, come up to Aussie Gar with Roundabout and do you know, go your own way there. It would have bypassed the traffic here. It would just have been local people coming in what specifically going into Southwood. No, no, it's a, yeah, no, no, the whole no, area no, is just no. it's it's just quite. I mean, I tell you who I feel sorry for: newcomers, and they've bought properties on what was called the Havelock Estate. Now it's called Southall Village. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And there is only one way in, one way out, which is Havelock Road. Mm -hmm. And I now realise how difficult it is to, you know, exit. At peak time, well, because Havelock Road is chock a block, you know where um, oh, the yeah. school is. Havelock School, primary yeah. school, mm -hmm. and then Merrick yeah. Road is backed up in both directions towards yeah. uh, Heston, and in the opposite direction towards the station. Yeah, what they could um, do, and I think, God, you know, what have I done by buying mm. a flat? <laughs> of course, <laughs> um, Angela. Now, it's, sorry. If you go down Park Avenue where it goes to Green Drive, opposite, there's a what they call a devil's tunnel. You know, you got, there's a little footpath that goes all the way to Havelock Estate. Did you know that? 
similar to what it was down the straight your end. That's the no, I didn't you, know. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna turn that in, widen that, and turn it into a road as well. Did you know where the lock is at have lock estate? Top locks. If Never been down, that far, but yeah. Yeah, if you go further down where the village is. Yeah. Yep. There's a park there, isn't it? It used to be the old the nursery for Ealing Council where they used to grow all the trees and flowers for the whole of the borough. But well, they sold it, I've turned right. it into a park. But just all because right. there's a lock, there's actually a lock there with the lock keeper's uh, cottage. There's a bridge, little bridge there. That used to be used by the public. But now, because the, that goes straight over to Norwood Green. Norwood Green is an affluent part, isn't it? Of well, South that's Africa. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so I didn't want to scan over to Norwood Green then. Yeah, so they blocked me off. <laughs> <laughs> that could be yeah, exactly the traffic, but you know, if we got to suffer, why can't no one green stuff? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Well, it's, it's planning. I'm surprised that Peter Mason, you know, is he got a degree or is he doing a degree in time planning? Well, no, I think you know, it, it's all they're trying to gear it towards um, a new demographic, yeah, of course, yeah, just, you know, put their head down at night in their shoebox flat. Mm. And then jump on the Elizabeth line yeah, yeah. to work and to go and socialise in town and go and do their shopping in Westfield and up the West End. You know, they don't want to be integrated into the community, you know. And there's also no facilities, is there? You know, yeah. you know so cinema. Whilst I'm the head, the leader of Ealing Council, Peter Mason, I think he's got... He, he, some kind of degree is it town planning? Yeah, in so town planning. I think he's got post grad in town planning. Yeah, so he's got post grad. Post grad, and he yeah. represents Norwood. Um, or is it um, the green as well? That for green, yeah. Do, yeah. Does he not realise? I'm I'm not a qualified person, but I've just said why there's so much traffic in Southall is because of his unique because of the railway line, the mm. canal, and Spikes Bridge. Yeah, so. Why they still got time to build a bloody road from uh, Hayes Bypass all the way to the Iron Bridge? They could do it. Don't know. I mean, yeah. the question are they letting that remains an answer. There's a road connecting Pump Lane with South Road, and that isn't open yet. You know, why is it shut? You know, why well, they got planters across the road, and why is it only for site traffic for South Road? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I heard, I got happy when they said that there's going to be a connection, you know, to straight to, uh, uh, where, you know, Pump Lane is. Sorry, when I say Hayes, but that's what I meant. You yeah. know, so I could, I could go to the airport, the Tesco's or, you know, uh, the Western International cut through Southall or coming back this way instead of going. Well, I heard that it's not going to be through traffic. There's going to be, they're, they're going to restrict that as well. It might be oh, for it's, all, it's, all, it's all nuts. It's all crazy. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Anyway, I'm conscious of the time that it's um, nine o'clock. So our next meeting, I haven't got the dates to hand, uh, but it'll be the last Tuesday of September. So instead of being on a Thursday, because, um, Zeki, I believe you said that clashes with um, Southall Community Alliance's regular meeting. Well, that's right. Um, then. Yeah, we've now moved it to a Tuesday evening. Um, but you know, offline, I'm gonna have a conversation with you about um doing something really to raise awareness of uh, well, not just raise awareness to get the council to do something. No, it's not good enough that we are being poisoned in our homes. Um, you know, for those of us who you know live in Old Southall, um, it is intolerable to have burning plastic within our homes causing us to cough, um, to have throat irritation, uh, chest irritation, worsening of asthma, um, it has to stop. And I think, yeah, we have to raise the ante. We have to take it to them um, by doing some kind of public demonstration. Um, and to do it for those who are unable to, because I walked down Johnson Street and there was an old guy came out and... Um, mm -hmm. He said, uh, oh, they miscollected me today. And I think he used to go to some sort of daycare centre. And um, I suspect he's probably got dementia. You know, there are a lot of vulnerable, disadvantaged people oh, in this loads, community honestly, are... who can't stand up for themselves. Of course. that's See, that's what the councillors and eating council, they know that. Southall is unique in that sense. And then they get extra funding 
from various organizations and they actually bloody apply for it but it never filters down to where they say it's going to be used to these vulnerable people yeah actually Honestly, before, before we terrible. go yeah sorry before we go um you mentioned let's go southall and let's go southall receives millions of course and this um you know they the council promoted these uh what they call state-of-the-art gyms um mm -hmm. in the I've red, been one in the wreck spikes mm -hmm. bridge park southall park uh there's one also in the manor house grounds mm -hmm. well anyway i went to southall park and um one of the cross trainers mm -hmm. the paint is coming off the handle oh yeah so like picture of yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and i used also uh some equipment in south or wreck uh mm -hmm. yeah the bike uh and they are squeaking really badly um so you know i, I dread to think how much has been spent on this equipment mm -hmm. but you know i think one piece of equipment said he's got a 25 year guarantee mm -hmm. i don't what? see it unless it's maintained and serviced actually being in operation for the next 25 years of course not for, uh, angela that you we, uh, let's go southall is it a department of ealing council or what or is it all a separate organization no what? it's um a project um and i think uh, the council um bid for money from um sport england uh, oh, no, they're I'm... running different pilots in you know yeah. deprived areas but what, so what? It, you know, Southall was one of the pilot areas which was awarded. You know, oh, there's, a, there's a few yeah. on there. I know there's yeah, about yeah. five different sites yeah. over in yeah, UK. Yeah. But you know, I would I would question you know really the reach and impact of the project. No, no, because listen. I don't see it advertised in the local pharmacies no. that I go to. No. I've not seen a notice in my GP surgery, and um, it seems to me they just wholly rely upon advertising on also, facebook and Twitter. Social, yeah they do this something called the southall run on saturday mornings yeah and honestly i, I don't know how many people tell you see few old aunties who are probably the local residents yeah they're probably and the rest are outsiders old, yeah yeah all you know uh, middle class middle class white gentlemen i don't know where they yeah, come yeah. from yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Or, honestly uh, and they're getting good money paid. They're volunteers. Well, there was a Freedom of Information Act someone done a few months ago. Just the people who go there and tell people, this is in South Africa, do you actually need volunteers to tell people to go that way? They get £18 an hour. There's about 12, 13 of them of that or South, Let's Go South or organisation who are earning between £35,000 and £82,000. I know, I know. They've Shocking. scored. They were set up Shocking. in 2018, and they've, and this project is going on until 2000 and another four years, 2026. Already, they've skewed four and a half million pounds. Now, if you work I think, out... I think the impact is going to be very limited in terms of, like I say, the reach. You know, when I see the publicity, it's mainly... Sort of middle-aged to elderly yeah, people do. where are the young people where are the no, people no, in no, their no, 30s and I, 40s my daughters haven't heard of them i haven't heard of them it's only because of what i do i've you know i've learned yeah yeah, yeah. But let's do doctor bike they do biking what they're doing is they've realized how to get funding so everything in the way big south will all right they can't speak the language there's diabetes here there's this ailment they'll get the funding now because they're well established already they've skewed four and a half million pounds oh you know now, that gentleman, one of the officers, is earning, as I said, £72,000. If he's there for eight doing, years... Doing what exactly, though? In media or whatever. Seriously, there's a post. If you, uh, you, I think you probably have got that freedom of information. Now, 72000 say, for eight years, seven times eight, what is it? For 28, 50. He's earned 560000 So four, from four and from 4500000 million, that is... Over half a million, yeah. Yeah, 10% of the funding they've skewed is just going to that one person. But as I said, there's 15 of them who are earning from 35. So probably half of that, four and a half million, is actually going as wages. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, they don't seem to be interested in feedback because I met, oh gosh, somebody. And you'll see him, you know, they've got those screens in the park and he's mm. um, demonstrating various exercises. 
and um you know, I said, came over to talk to me because I was using the equipment in Southall Park and said, you know, we're here on a, I think it's Saturday. And, and I said, look, you know, my local park uh, is Southall Rec. And I said, you know, my complaint is that most of the equipment is dedicated to upper body exercises. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a real imbalance, very little. All I've got, I think, are it's just a bike, the bikes, um, probably about probably four bikes or so. Um, but nothing else uh, for the lower body other than the old equipment. Um, but in terms of, you know, the new equipment, um, you know, the balance is towards upper body strength. Um, and those are quite difficult exercises unless, you know, you are serious, you know, strength into strength training to really get that level of fitness to do things like chin ups. Yeah. So, but they don't seem to be in it. You know, he didn't answer me. He didn't answer my oh, question. So why, you know, is there so much variation between what park has what equipment? Why isn't it standardized across all the parks? Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. So you're basically saying most of that equipment is for people who are proper athletes. Well, I mean, how many people do you know who can do, you know, chin ups and. Uh, you know, not many uh, no, press no, no. ups and you know that you know you, where you really need serious upper body strength. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. So you the know, average that, person yeah. can't do it because when I go to the park, you know, I don't see the training rig being used by adults other than by children as a climbing frame. Yeah, so it was basically it's not fit for purpose again. They should have done a proper well, study. Where's the, where's the consultation? Yeah, you know? exactly. So they should have realised what well, how many people are going to be using the park, how many people will be actually making use of these facilities, and then brought, bought the appropriate equipment. So they haven't done that. I don't know. Maybe they bought batch from China, got a good price. <laughs> well, Honestly. somebody somebody's making money, and yeah. uh, and I wouldn't be know. surprised. You said the one in Sapple Park is already flaking off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fact, I, I, I went I went to Sunbury, right? And yeah. it's the same um, equipment, the same company, mm. will be a limited range. And one of their bikes already doesn't work. And you're talking about new equipment, relatively new, you know, mm. installed since uh, April, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's just, it seems to be no accountability mm -hmm. to the community about what sort of equipment, you know, we would like to see. No, no, exactly. See, this is it. These people, the counsellors and all these people are in a position, they say, mate, it's, you know, when someone asks them higher up, these organisations or labels, they just make up stuff. So residents are happy about that issue. And, the, you know, it's, it's the God's word. That, there's no consultation. They're not giving, reflecting the true opinion or the true Democrat, or, you know, whatever it is on the ground level. They just make up whatever they want. Now, we were still yeah. have, uh, you know, let's go southward. That is the new force in Southwell. Honestly, they advise. You look at their website. They've got Doctor Bike. They've got the biking around Southwell. This run, they were like waterside project. They're killing it. I, I don't know about a month ago. I just random. I don't go on it. I got a notification, and it was an Instagram account. Usually, they've got you know this that uh, come to the man out. They do cooking in cafe, drop in sessions, that kind of. Thing. See, they they've got the pot. Their hands in every single pot available. I'm sure they're going to start thinking of more. But yeah, but it's very limited in terms of the reach. You know, yeah, I exactly. don't really There's see no reach, doing anything for no. young people who are more interested in, you know, um, team sports. Yeah, exactly. You know? They it don't doesn't... want to be doing yoga and chair yeah. exercises, and... and it's only a few, you know, few people yeah. who actually go there, and it's the same people who always turn up in the photographs. Mm. Now. Oh, yeah, oh, so I clicked on this Instagram. Let's go. Guess what it is? It's something about 30 years, maybe about you know, two Asian, three Asian guys, 30 years old. They're on a boat, bungalow, boat party on the Thames. They've got nice, wearing nice clothes. There's some nice background music playing, which they put on, you know, like on Facebook story. They've got mm -hmm. drinks and they're nice girls. This well. I don't know whether it was meant to be intentional or not, but this is what they get up to. Public money that they get, they're using it up to go to boat parties up in bloody mm. Thames, mate. Oh, it's just, it's just or maybe they're, or isn't maybe it? They're but really, the, the public, you know, who it should be intended, who is intended for, are not benefiting. And we're still going to have 
rising levels of diabetes, obesity, depression. You know, we've got no, as I say, community centers that people can just readily meet. You know, not everybody wants to socialize in a house of religion, yeah? No, of course And, um, you know, there is a real lack of purpose to do something mm -hmm. for the community um, because the uh, benefit is for affluent people who just want to use Southport as a place to put their head at night. But listen, I'm conscious of the time. Yes, I know yes, it's the yes, second yes. time I'm saying this. Does anybody yes, else yes. want to contribute before we close the meeting this month? Okay. I'd like to thank everybody for attending the meeting. Thank you for all of you who've contributed, whether it's in the chat box um, or, um, you know, verbally. And uh, look forward to seeing you next month, onwards and upwards. So good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.